Okay, so let's just begin. If you just want to tell us about you, how you started, just a brief background history on you, basically. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. I my evolution, I see okay, moving from reality to fantasy. That's why you see what I do now is more uh, not so realistic, but the, the most fantasy is the pictures the figures. They are not um, conventional, I say. I do not tend to recreate the human forms and to create something for them. So I, I, I started searching around and most times I see people doing um, some realistic stuff and I just want to be different. I want to be different. And I, I know that as humans, sometimes people crave for features that are different from what they see. And I started thinking of something more extraterrestrial, like not just the normal human things. I, I began to imagine creatures from other spaces different from ours, different from the Earth. So I thought of this stuff too, and you know, that actually led me to what I started doing now. And in, in the line with that, I see that to create innovation, you can either take more to what has been existing, or you twist what has been existing, or you also subtract from what has been existing. So I know the human structure is the way it should be. Then what I can do is to add more to it. Oh, I want my eyes to be my center of attraction. So at that, I decided to enlarge the eyes, which is also one of the most uh, the prominent part of the body. So here we are today. And I, I call this style the Coptic art. You know, it's a fusion of the Coptic art and, um, and um, uh, an abstraction, basically. You know, the I, I started doing a lot of research younger than uh, from the Egyptian Coptic arts. When you study the Egyptian Coptic art, you see more of those features there, those buggy eyes and all of those stuff. So, I, and I, I sat down that, what can I do to, you know, I can infuse this style into something. I can, you know, take from this, I can take from that to make it a whole lot of stuff. And yeah, I, I, I arrive at this now. I always tell people that my work is a time machine. Um, I want people to go to the past to also build the future from the same standpoint. That's my philosophy about it. So in the line of that, I just like you rightly said that um, I try to depict the Western world. It is like a counter culture right now. It's like a, it's like um, a fusion of something Afrocentric and also a Western style too. And the black and white aspect of it, that's the, 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 the gray field. You know, it, it's, it's actually saying a statement in time that before the advent of technology and uh, modernity itself, what we used to have compared to what we have now, you know, is, is a comparison of time, comparison of culture, and also to also address um, colonial um, excesses. You know, we uh, being in Niger you know, Nigeria, you know, we've had um, much influence from uh, the British system, basically, you know, the imperial system. And we still have much of those influences there. And before then, we also have what um, what is ours as Africa. So I am trying to also project to um, to everyone in this contemporary world the identity, the, you know, the black consciousness, the, the identity of a black man, and also the influence of the Western world in an African you know, setting. I, I see that um, individuals like to take advantage of each other and people always like their will to be done or their intentions to be accepted, not minding other people's you know, reactions or take on what to affect others. And so it's like, again, at, at the moment, we are having clashes of ideologies right now, you know, in the world presently. And why um, that is because you see that uh, the key figures uh, the key players in those things are the, are the political persons mm -hmm. and why we have the presence of the religious person there. Now, I I know that religion has, uh, you know, uh, been a good tool to aid civilization and also religion has also been a, you know, a bad weapon, you know, against humanity, a bad weapon of oppression also too. So religion has been that. And in Africa here, yeah, there's a thin line or a thin relationship between politicians and religious leaders. Okay? So sometimes they come when, when they want to go for their campaign, they, they believe the religious leaders have the audience and the likes and 
they can actually reach out to the people. And these things have been online since inception, right from the, the era of um, this um, narrow technology. We still have the effect of those things. So we're having a society now, the religion is playing um, you know, some negative parts to in what we are having right now. And the Fidika is here saying, okay, I am not a religious person, neither am I, I just want to be natural, I just want to think, think freely what I feel is good, you know, and yet we have a moral list there. So it's a clash of perception, basically. Mm, mm. To, to, to stress the point of religion, I'm also noticing your, in your paintings, you have a lot of, you know, you have um, black angels, you know, so I remember seeing that in one of them. So I think that that kind of made me that that just gave me the um, the um, the um, notion that you know you are very pro pro black, you know, pro African, you know, very vivid, you know, when it comes to um, our culture. But then a couple of things you mentioned in one of your captions: celestialism. And um, the second thing that I also saw was there was a lot of African art, you know, at the bottom and, you know, our traditional art pieces. So what was that, was that um, done to, to cover all grounds? Like, you know, the angels, and these are the African ones at the bottom, the angels are at the top, or, you know, could, they, could you have put the angels at the bottom and then the African art, you know, at the top? So do you know what I mean? The, car, the carvings or, you know, what, what was your mindset when when you're when you're playing with this? And are you even religious? Are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? What what is it that you practice? But also, please explain the the division of of the religious pieces in, in your art, please. I said um, my paintings represent so many things at the time. You know, some, as human beings, we multitask, we think of so many things at the same time. And if we um, say the, the canvas is the thought field, you know, the field of thought, so it means we should see so many things at the time, just like we have it in the mind. Because what we think of at first is an impression, and when we bring it out, it becomes an expression. So there should be a similarity between my thoughts and what you see outside. Now, I personally, I believe that they are present of, uh, I mean, presence of spirit, spiritual um, bodies. I, I call them the extra, terrestrial bodies, celestial bodies right now. Now, depending from any angle of uh, religion you are coming from, okay, both um, the Hindu believe in this, the, the Christian, um, uh, uh, the, the Muslim also believe in this, the Ekanka, and, you know, we have all kinds of religion. And they will know so well that there are so many um, pseudo scientific occurrences, things that are beyond the supernatural thing that we might not really be able to give explanations to. So, I, I believe right now, to speak in the house, we are much more than how we have right now. We are much more than this. There are much more than one person in the house. Okay, with Nick over there, there are much more than you know how many people there. It's just that the ones we can see or, or the ones we can't see are not, you know are much more than the ones we can see okay so i try to represent that in my painting i, I want my painting to also talk about something metaphysical i believe in metaphysics i believe in things beyond in the natural too i i so much believe in in um, divinity I, I know divinity exists we have the impact of divinity on that so it now depends on what aspect of religion you are coming in but i believe um, they will also interpret the same thing. So the idea of the black angels, I was watching um, Muhammad Ali's video some time ago, and he said the first time he got to church, the, uh, his grandma took him to church, he saw that the angels are all white. You know, Jesus' face was white in a blue eyeball. That's, and a blue, you know, a blue eyeball is a Scandinavian person, someone from the, the particular part of Europe. And that is in the description, okay? So now it did could uh, you know uh, we've had so many cases where um, some said um, the particular emperor in Rome commissioned some artists during the Renaissance period and asked to start painting um, biblical characters to be white and all that. I don't know what how true that is, but I believe that whosoever would believe um, spirituality is should be in touch with where we are coming from. That is with our roots. So it is not. 
our spirituality or what we take should be God. Shouldn't be strange to our color. Shouldn't be strange to our person. Shouldn't be strange to our people. You know, and that led me to the fact of um, you know, drawing angels to the black. I, you know, I, I said it. Um, challenging so many things, so many norms, so many existence that okay, should should everything be white? And in Africa, yeah, I keep on going to many homes. I still see the painting of Jesus um, to be white and all of. Now I, I am not a racist, okay? I am what I'm just trying to project is to bring a common ground where all race or all tribe can share equal value. That's just it, okay? So. I, I believe much in Pan-Africanism. I believe much more in the philosophy of Pan-Africanism. That's Kwame Nkrumah and, um, you know, so many guys like that. And I, I try as much as possible to replicate those thoughts line to in my paintings. That, so going to the African stools, the African chairs, and all of this stuff, we have, I, um, I believe so much in what is housed too. And... I try to, uh, it's an attempt to remind of our people too of where we are coming from in the world of technology, in the world where everything is going so fast and moving and everybody's trying to go up, I don't. And so that in the end, we won't have a lost identity, we won't have a lost perception, we won't have a lost culture. Okay, so we are trying to instill that into their minds. We are trying to remind them who we are. You know, it's like a wake up call. It's like um, a witness. Like it's like um, an artistic revival to revive that which is dead or that which is sleeping. Okay, to bring it back to life. That's the end point of my heart. First and foremost, I have two main ideas I actually want to portray in Budget of Mensa, and which I have done. That I, you know, Mensa happens to be a Ghanaian name. Ashanti tribe to be precise. And the staff is holding is related to the Benin culture, you see something there. And you see this clash there. Now, the two things is this. Number one, like I said, bringing the African identity amongst other worldview on, on the same neutral platform where no culture is higher than any culture. One. Then two, again, I actually use that to represent the disunity amongst Africans themselves. Mm. Yeah. Now, you should ask me that what is a Ghanaian man doing with a Nigerian staff there? Um, many years back, I think um, 1977, thereabouts, when we have this Ghana must go crisis. And it, it, it is it's a kind of xenophobia. And we're having a repetition of those things even till now. Now, at that point, during the regime of um, um, Shagari and the likes, it does feel oh, the Ghanaians are doing too much, uh, you know, they are, they, are, they are too much in our land, they are doing great things, you guys should go back to your home. And I saw, I, I, I have a documentary of those videos, like a live documentary of those videos. I saw those videos, how those guys were beating, how those guys were, you know, stripped, how those guys were sent packing. You know, some of them had investments here and you know, they, they were sent back in and they blocked all. Now, fast forward to um, four years ago, thereabouts, where we have the xenophobia, the South Africans saying the Nigerian man should go home. That is just like a deja vu. That is just like repetition of what happened there before. And in as much as the Africans are not united, then I don't think we should be saying things like, um, oh, maybe the whites are racist. Because even we are saying we are not united, we are not home together. And right now, as I speak to you, the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian community are also doing the same thing to Nigeria right now. They are sending them back. You know, those things could be go to go on the ground. There are only so many things that it needs to cover. But I'm telling you, it's happening right now. You know, we have been touch with, you know, we've been in touch with those that have experienced these things. And as long as these things keep going on, even the mission of Pan Africanism will fail. Now it's just like two brothers fighting and you want somebody from the outside to respect uh, your union as a family or to respect um, your bond as an household, it's not going to work out. So the two point is this, first, Africa must be in the unity. That's why you see the Ghanaian man holding um, the, the, the old uh, Bini cultural staff. Africa must be in unity and the other world too should um, 
uh, have a kind of a mutual respect for people's culture, their language, um, their fashion, their way of doing things. You know, that guy, I, I should have, of course, I should have portrayed him to wear a brother or something more cultural, but I tried to bring something more Western that, okay, these two things can still flow if they both have um, equal value and equal respect for each other. I, I believe that the human body is made of, uh, you know, humans are made of body, soul, and spirit, just like we, um, so many religions and many philosophers has addressed this. And I, I believe that art is spiritual. I believe art is spiritual. I believe art is not just something just done ordinarily. I don't know for other people. So in the, in the light of art being spiritual, I try as much as possible to represent the time this the, the touches of um spirituality in my heart too you know i try to represent that in the characters in the items you see there and when when, when like, to answer the question directly before i start painting sometimes i always have much more of the inner reflection i think so much you know i start imagining things i start thinking for uh, thinking of things that um that we can't, you know, you know, there are some things we can't really interpret that people cannot really address much, like death. Now, you know, I start representing such things, death, dream, you know, things that are beyond the conscious state. You know, I I, I, I read um, this um, Sigmund Freud, his um, disciple analyst. I, I read some of his books some time ago and that also gave me projection beyond um, just the normal physical and it inspires me it draws me in it gives me another drive to create what is not just you know i won't say simple but the simplicity and complexity too so i try as much as possible to be careful but then i still paint something more um more extraordinary basically there are some paintings that i i do not want to sell Okay, there are some paintings that I, I, I believe that um, there's no amount of money given to me that is going to because you know when you when you've created the painting now, you cannot create that same painting again. It's a one-time event, it's a one-time experience, and that's all. You are going to make something it could be similar but not exactly that type. So sometimes I don't get the urge to to paint, um, to me to sell what I paint. Okay, <laughs> when I'm on painting, I am checking on other artists' work, see anyone that is inspiring. I, I believe much in, uh, much in um, network, like um, I, I believe ideas and they are inter, um, where we are interconnected, our minds work. You know, sometimes you might think of starting something and before you know it, somebody else has started and you know, you are why you are still thinking. So that's why it's good to look at other artists' work. Sometimes you get inspired and you get one or two ideas from there. Then I, I read too. I like reading a lot. I read a lot of um, historical books. Some I read um, on some blogs online. I try as much as possible to gather history is to gather records so that I can paint something from it. Then I meditate. <laughs> when I when I don't paint, I meditate. I, I take um, you know calm breath. I, I journey with it. You know there's a, a there's a lot of amazing stuff in here. And the only way to make people see the amazing stuff here is to take you on a journey. And you can only see that on my camera. So sometimes I, I go on a journey myself. It's a, it's a self adventure. I, I tour in myself. I try to see a lot of beautiful things and see what I can bring out of myself for you guys to see. <laughs> mm. Love it, bro. Bro, I love your energy. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. Yeah, I love it, cool. man. Um, what, what what would you say your creative process is like before a new project? So like, you know, let's say you've been meditating for a while, you've been looking at other artists and now you're getting, you're feeling like, okay, and I may pick up the brush in a couple of days, like you're you're gearing up to to get back into action. But what would you what would you say is your creative process? Is there something that you do? Do you drink? Do you go out? Do you what what's the routine like when you're about to get your mojo back? Yeah, you know, sometimes too. Um 
I take creative breaks too. When I do my creative breaks, I just like to move around. Sometimes I like where there's water and you know, go on the cruise. And uh, I, I'm always careful too. You know, sometimes if before you start another creative, um, you know, work, during those periods where you're not doing something, like you want to start something, you could slip into depression unknowingly. Yeah, you could because you know when you think, 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 and you are not um, doing something, you know, engaging at that point, and you are like, okay, what should I do? You know, the the, the thing is this: uh, sometimes the the greatest challenge for artists is actually coming out of what your comfort zone, what you have been creating, that is amazing. That you you know, it's like you can actually do it even without looking at the canvas it's, 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 it's very comfortable for you if you want to come out of that place and you want to create something you know it's like another process it is challenging sometimes it is um it is i, I don't know there's, there's a way we feel it i don't know about okay let me say there's a way i i feel it upstairs here it could be a lot, lot of pressure that oh i don't want to repeat myself often i want to do something else you know there was a time i did the car series of you know, different couples, and I felt okay. I want to move into something that was still our character. That could take a whole lot, and um, you might not enjoy it at the first place. But believe me, the art, you know, the art come is always fantastic. Can you remember like a, a specific, like defining moment in your life or in your career that just encouraged you that to keep going? Like, okay, I want to be an artist, or maybe like. I need to stick to this or maybe like wow this is amazing i want do you know what i mean can you is there a, a defining moment for you that you can look yeah. at like, without of course. This? of course but to to surprise you the most defined moment of my life to uh to keep being an artist was actually the moment i was rejected it was the place of rejection so i took that as another energy, I sent a mail to um, a particular gallery in um, Lagos, Nigeria, here, and um, I sent it twice. And I didn't like the response, you know, I got. I said, "What am I saying?" The people responded, and it was like, you know, it was it was a bad, you know, time. Then I felt like, okay, I need to challenge myself to, you know, to keep at what I'm doing. And that that moment was supposed to be a very sad moment, but. I actually changed it to, to be something nice. And believe me, that same gallery, you know, kept looking out for me that, okay, can you work with us? And I was like, have you guys forgotten that you guys rejected me sometimes ago? And <laughs> so I, you know, it, it, it's just life, it's just life. And I I, I, I sold like, um, you know, two to three pieces for them at first then. I, I just, that that is nice. and. I don't want to work with them anymore. Not we don't have issues, but I just feel that is nice. I have, I, I believe success is the greatest gen, friend rather, and should be the rejection should should be the greatest energy. Not just when you are accepted at many places, where you are rejected, to, there should be energy coming from there. You should take it out. Oh, oh, you guys think um, my work is not nice enough? I, I, I wish I will show you by showing you not just because you want to make a statement to them, but because you want to be a better version of yourself. So mention three people that you would love to collaborate in any form. First of all, I would like to collaborate with Bonner Boy. I believe Bonner Boy is, um, is one of the most Afrocentric um, hats we have on the planet right now. Um, his styles, his, um, his journey of music, and um, I, love his person I love his personality too. You know, Bonner Boy could be an activist too in some of his songs, and I think we have um, some some things in common. Okay, I would like to Bonner Boy to be number one. Then um, number two, do you mean do you, what if it's just a body, not yep, just yep. One? yep. Okay, I, I would like to collaborate with Hennessy. Hennessy, please. Why? Yeah. I, I believe they can have some, you know, they are bought to, they are, they, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they are product branding. I believe there could be some element of um, something cultural at some point, you know, something like this now, okay? Mm -hmm. Something like this um, could reflect in their product design. I would like to collaborate mm -hmm. with Sia. I love Sia's 
the well and um getting inspiration from Beyonce's video um the brown skin girl and the setting and the like I believe there are so many things um she I can do with her to in maybe one of our videos uh maybe creating a large backdrop of my artwork where she you know why she's singing and she's being recorded you know all kinds of things so those ideas shouldn't be just you know painting in the studio or the house which could show them you know we could display those things in videos too in music videos and an album callbacks too yeah i can i i, I can do a lot of collaboration around that would you say the business killed or is killing the house okay the business in sense that um being commercial kills the creativity is that what you yeah. mean yeah, and yeah, it's also, no. also killing the creative because now it's like um, I think from what I'm getting from you, I, you know, I had this discussion with Nick last week is that a true artist, as much as we want to make money or make money or whatever, um, a true artist sticks to inspiration and feeling. Yeah, these are things that you can't buy, you can't put a price on, and you just know when you're in the mood, when it's right, it's right. And yes, you want to make money, you want to sustain, but a true artist also knows that if they don't have the feeling for five years, as painful as it may be, they're not going to force it. You may still practice, but you're not going to put something out into the world that five, five years too much, five too much, exactly that you're not ready for. Now, when when I when Nick and I were having our discussion and we're trying to break down and dissect what we mean by the business and commercialization is that if we look at the music today or even clothes or whatever it's like if this is what's paying my bills and they've told you for example you need to recreate let's give an example of um, you need to recreate um the gods and the uh, uh most that painting the gods are not to blame you need to recreate 10 of those it's like I, I can do, like you said, I can do with my eyes closed. Each one will be different. And you can now take care of your family even better. You can make more money. Would you do it? And if you did it, your integrity inside would be questioned because as a true artist, you will not be at peace with yourself. If money starts coming in, I just want to flow well. That's why even you see music artists, sometimes a lot of them, you know, have their first album and they are, they're, they are, they are all over the place and that will be the last time because money could be intoxicating sometimes too and a way of guiding that do you know what i do sometimes sometimes when i see that my man now i, I also know sorry to, to, to continue i also know that there, there are needs you need to pay bills as materials are getting more expensive much more than i used to buy it last year and the last time i went to the art store you know, there was a whole lot of money that is there in place and also, you need to you need to look good, you know, as a person. You know, sometimes too, like, like right now, I, I want to do, so, I want to create some sculptures for my work, and it's going to take a lot of material, and I need money too. So now, the the, the, the bottom line or the, the middle ground, let me say the middle ground, why we can balance both is that um, I don't believe an artist should create for the sole aim of money. Okay, one, and sometimes too. An artist can have some, um, how will I put it now? Um, if the person has the side business, it's okay. But shouldn't the art work shouldn't be for the sole aim of money. And what you can do is after creating one or two, you try to look up platforms where you can easily sell them for good money. Now, when you sold one, you try as much as possible to, you know, to save and get necessary things, knowing that you shouldn't be selling them every day because it is not mass production, it is art. It is not other items you can just you know create in you know in, in a large proportion you get so that should be there i know you need to feed you know to put something on the table but the creativity should not stop should keep reading the, uh, now lastly to answer that question an artist must always remember why he or she started at first place remember where you start from and why you started okay i started this store because i had this feeling and I also want to put it um, in, on the surface where people can see. That's the enough reason. That reason should be the reason why I will continue. Not in the long run, money keeps coming in and I started doing something that doesn't you know, do well with my integrity. That doesn't make more sense. Okay? Who is your 
favorite artist of all time or who are your favorite artists okay my favorite art, artist of all time wow that question oh <laughs> top heavy where else is ever um favorite artist i i, I like van gogh and um the most interesting thing about that guy is that he didn't make I, i'm not sure he sold any of his art pieces or maybe i don't maybe one or two times like that throughout his lifetime now mm. compared to uh, this generation where everybody just want to make quick cash mm. you get so that that is enough legendary for me for someone to uh, live for a number of years and believe what is going is not just to bring money to him those things are like um is like they're like portion of his soul so van gogh is um i mean he's a wonderful person he was a wonderful person and right now we still have so many of his works that we are still trying to comprehend like what 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 has i mean what was he thinking why creating this the starry night mm. you know those uh you know attempt and yeah van gogh is amazing very very amazing are you aware of lemmy gary oku lemmy gary oku lemmy gary oku okay so that is the guy that does um fellas artworks did about 20 pieces okay so um, he's based in Lagos as well, um, obviously. So um, you should try and, you know, just check him out. Maybe even potentially linking up. But yeah, let me do about 20 hours work so far. I started when he was about 18. And um, the reason why I brought his name up was because Lemmy was um, inspired by, at that time, um, by the Funkadelic artwork in the 70s. And since I know, since you mentioned you do research well, so yeah. the guy that inspired Lemmy is a guy called Pedro Bell. So I just wanted to just share that one with you. So that okay, guys, it's cool. Google Pedro Bell's stuff. Um, you might get, uh, you know, what what it is. yes, it's it's like the, yeah, exactly. So, but the whole when you see Fela's artwork, how comical and how whatever it was, and you know, it was amazing. You know, very satirical, very you know, exaggerated at that time. As much as we focus on it being genius, we forget that that was also a trend in yeah Africa. so yeah i think a lot of times because we lack information we sort of the depths of where we get our knowledge from can be very limited you know we sort of believe that oh lemmy might have created this thing himself and like you said it's good to be inspired but just that a lot of people don't know that lemmy didn't actually create that art form of you know exaggerated pieces and political pieces because if you google pedro bell you know, you start to see um, a lot of funkadelic music. That's literally what the artworks were like. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that. I just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check them out. I'll check them out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just to wrap up, who, which music? Who are you listening to at the moment? Well, uh, I, I listen to uh, Bonner Boy at the moment, too. but um, sometimes but I don't feel like listening to Nigerian music. Too. I listen to Coldplay. <laughs> Coplay, yeah, I like Coplay. I, li- I like the sound from Coplay. I like Enya too. Okay. I like Coplay, like Enya. Yeah, you know Enya, you might not have much words, just the sounds, and those sounds will make you elevated and boom. What would you prefer to be referred to as an artist or a painter? Well, all all painters are artists. But not all artists are painters. Yes, sir. All right, my brother, man. You take care. You enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Alter Daily, the alternative network.